This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, doing another river project. And this river project is one of my tried and true sweater favorites. This is a child sweater pattern that's over on Knit Natters. I've made a lot of them. I've given most of them away, but because this one isn't sewed together, it has still hanging around my house. This is one that is made with two strands of an industrial yarn. It's about the weight of a 212. And I have two squares that are the front and the back. This is the mark for the armhole. And then the sleeves are just going to go on here and here. So it's just a bunch of squares, and you might think, oh, it's not going to be that good of a sweater, but this does fit real children surprisingly well. They have lots of room. The sleeves are a little bit below the elbow, and we often, in the knit club, make these and have the just the yoke be a contrasting color, especially if we have a little bit of a really pretty variegated yarn that we can use to spruce up the yoke. Now, I've got some sport weight yarn because I'm going to chart this up for sport weight for these lessons and do it on both machines. One of the sport yarns I chose to use for this project is Bernat Baby Jacquard. I've got two different colors of it here, one in the wrapper and one ready to knit with. I always rewind my skeined yarn before I knit. This is a self-striping yarn, and here's how it knits up in the pink color scheme and I haven't actually knitted any of the blue color scheme yet. It has quite a few different options and I'm going to make my sweater out of this pink color scheme. However, I'm going to put a plain yoke on it. The plain yoke will be just on the front and it'll be with this candy pink which is actually another kind of yarn but it's the same gauge and the same fiber content. This is Baby Soft from Lion Brand. Here's the Baby Soft and here's the Bernat Jacquard, Baby Jacquard brand. And no, I'm not going to use them in the same project, but these are the, the same weight of yarn. This is called Sport Weight. It's a very standard size of yarn. And let me turn these around and show the markings on the skein. I've gone close in on that Bernat Baby Soft and for a 4 by 4 inch gauge square, which is shown on the label right here, really small compared to my finger, you would use a size 6 US needle or a 4 millimeter needle and you would get 22 stitches to the, to the 4 inch square or 10 centimeters, so 10 centimeter square or you would get 30 rows to that 10 centimeter 4 inch square. Now I'm close in on that Bernat Baby Jacquard and in this case it also recommends a 4 millimeter or a US size 6 needle and in the 4 by 4 inch square or 10 centimeter square you get 23 and a half stitches and 30 rows. Now both yarns recommended the same size needle. One said 23 and a half stitches and the other one said 22 stitches. Well, over the course of four inches, that isn't a lot of difference. And then they both said 30 rows. So these two yarns are compatible and could both be used for the pattern. You do want, however, to make a swatch and get your gauge before you jump in. One other caution before you begin to knit this pattern. Make sure you have enough yarn in the same dye lot. This particular pattern, because it's English rib, is using a lot of yardage. And this back of a sweater, about a size 4, used a whole 3.5 ounce ball of the Bernat Baby Jacquard. I would encourage you to buy one more ball than you think you need, make sure they're all the same dye lot, and plan on returning the extra ball, if you have an extra ball, the next time that you go to that store. It is customary for yarn shops to accept, in return, an extra ball of yarn. In fact, yarn shops will encourage you to buy that extra ball of yarn because months later, if you've had the project lying around, if you discover that you can't get more of the yarn, it's very, very difficult to get it. 
I'm at the standard gauge machine. This happens to be a Brother 965i, and I'm going to knit the front. I've already knitted the back of this sweater. What I'm going to do that's a little different on the front is I'm going to have a contrasting yoke. It's going to begin where I did the armhole mark, but otherwise, all of these pattern pieces are alike. They have a few rows of plain ribbing, then they have a lot of rows of English rib, then a few rows of plain ribbing, and you bind off. Now the front and back are exactly alike in that way. The sleeve, the only difference is different number of stitches, different number of rows, but also there isn't any, any of this plain ribbing up at the top of the sleeve. There'll be a cuff, but no plain ribbing. The first step is my needle setup. It's simply the number of stitches for your size in the pattern, which I will post on the blog. and. It is one by one ribbing, so you have every other needle. Take the total number of stitches and divide by two to get your needle numbers. So you have every other needle on the main bed, every other needle on the river, and then just make an adjustment by one stitch if necessary to make sure that the end needle is actually on the main bed. Here are the carriage settings for the zigzag row, which is part of the cast on. Both carriages are set below tension zero, just as tight as they'll go, and I'm threaded, and both carriages are set plain. Consult your manual for the way to set your carriages for plain knitting. This pattern can be done on any standard gauge machine with a river. There is no need for a punch card or electronic pattern. I knit one row right to left for the zigzag row. I've hung the comb and the weights. For this pattern, I'm going to use three weights. Next, I'll do the three rows set for circular. I want tension one and a click on both carriages, left part button on the main carriage, and the right part slider on the river. So you set your machine for whatever your circular settings are, and then knit three rows. For the ribbing, I'm on tension five on both carriages, and I'm set to plain again. I'm going to do several rows of ribbing, and then I'm going to switch to English rib. I need to keep my place, so I've set the row counter to zero. And now I knit the ribbing. Once the bottom ribbing is in, I change the setting on the river carriage only so that it will tuck to the left. That will give me the English rib that I want. Now I just knit the number of rows specified in the pattern to get up to the armhole marker. For this one, I wanted to have the contrasting yoke. So when I got the number of rows in that gets me up to the armhole marker, I'm going to go ahead and tie on a new color. This is going to be the yoke, this pink. This darker pink print was most of the sweater. And I'm going to take my latch tool and grab the yarn between the beds and pull it down. I'm going to put a clothespin on it to hold it down, and then always, always, I need to double check and make sure that it is still properly threaded in the river. Then I can just go on without any change of settings and do the number of rows specified in the pattern from the armhole marker to the beginning of the top ribbing. 